I'll be testing this REI Wonderland 6 for its ease of setup, base area, sidewalls, awnings, and much, much more. Before I take you through the actual testing itself, here's just a couple of unboxing shots. I bought this Wonderland tent in a six person version. You can only get it from REI, so that's where I got mine from. After unboxing this REI Wonderland, here's everything that I found in the box. First up, I got this black carry bag, the tent body, a room divider, this green rainfly, poles in a separate carry case, plus stakes and guidelines in another smaller carry bag. I also took all the poles, stakes, and guidelines out of their carry bags, and basically I got these 5 poles, 18 stakes, and 8 red guidelines. For the ease of setup, here's a quick time lapse that you can watch, and first, I'm gonna go through a few things that I liked about this tent setup. For one, I liked that I could set up the entire Wonderland tent on my own, and I'm not even very tall, I'm only about 5 foot 3. It didn't take me very long too, this entire setup, including staking and guying out the tent, took me less than 20 minutes. Well, 19 and a half minutes, not to be specific or anything. If you need more info on this setup, I put together this step-by-step -step guide, which you can find on my channel if you need it. Moving along, I liked that the instructions were pretty good. I could figure out how to set everything up from just these instructions, and these are sewn onto the carry bag so you won't ever lose them. On the other hand, here are two small things that I didn't quite like. The first is that the pole sleeves are not color coded and all of them are this grayish color. I found that quite a bit surprising, especially considering that the poles, the grommets, the webbings and even the pole clips are color coded. And also, REI didn't give me enough stakes and guidelines. Basically, I'm short about 6 guidelines and a whopping 10 stakes. And now let's move on to the ease of takedown and pack away. The takedown isn't too difficult, it's just the opposite of the setup, I never had any issues, and this itself takes just 7 minutes. But it was the pack away back into the carry bag that actually took longer, it took me almost 10 minutes for a total timing of a whopping 16 and a half minutes. I go through how I pack away my Wonderland 6 in this separate setup video, so I'm not going to go through that here, but one thing I want to mention is that for such an expensive tent, I think the carry bag can definitely be improved. I don't know why REI got rid of the Kingdom carry bag, which looks like a backpack and has a much bigger opening. And now instead, the Wonderland comes with this side loading carry bag. This means that the opening of the bag is at the side, the opening is much smaller so it's more difficult to get everything back in. For the base area, I measured the length of this Wonderland 6 to be about 120 inches and I measured the width to be about 99 inches. This is right about the marketed dimensions of 120 by 100 inches so a thumbs up to the Wonderland 6 for this. Oh, and this gave me a total base area of about 82 and a half square feet. On top of the base area, I also wanted to look at how many sleeping pads I could fit into this Wonderland 6. Here's me inflating some of my sleeping pads, and here's what having 6 pads looks like. So you can basically fit 6 pads or 3 double pads into this Wonderland 6, and there's even a tiny bit of space here for storing gear by the side. But all the pads that I used here are pretty much regular size of about 20 inches to maybe slightly over 20 inches wide. I'll put the dimensions on the screen here and as you can see, it's already a little bit of a tight fit. If your pads are like 25, even 30 inches wide, there's probably no way you can fit 6 of them in here. Instead, I recommend fitting a maximum of 4 people inside this tent, and here's what the queen bed sizing looks like. Here's me inflating 2 queen beds inside this tent, and voila! They both fit inside this Wonderland 6 rather nicely. On top of that, there's also some room at the foot of each mattress for storing gear. This Wonderland 6 comes with this one room divider, so I was able to split the tent into two rooms. To put this divider up, it comes with seven toggles to be attached to the seven loops around the tent, one at the top and three at each side. Here's a close-up shot of the toggles and loops. When using the divider, each room can actually fit three sleeping pads, and I'll show you how in a bit. Just let me rearrange them first, like so. This is actually another way you can fit 6 people into the tent with a little leftover room at the foot of each pad. 
And when I put the divider up to create two separate rooms, three pads fit into each room. It's probably a bit of a tight fit width-wise, but at least it's possible. You can also fit just two pads in each room so it doesn't feel too tight, and you get quite a bit of leftover space for gear. Or if you want, you can fit just one queen bed, although each bed fills up each room quite snugly too. So that's one thing that I really liked about this room divider, the size of each room is pretty good. I also really like that the divider has a zip in the middle so that I could easily access either room without having to take down the divider. And also, I could keep the divider open by pulling back the sides of the divider and tying up each side using these loops on the divider to the same toggles that I used to hang it up. Another great design is that each room has a good amount of mesh for ventilation, plus a door to get in and out of the tent. I also really like that the fabric isn't too see-through, here's kind of what it looks like up close, and also the gaps around the divider aren't too big like so. However, I would have liked if the divider extended all the way to the ground though, it currently doesn't. The height at the center of this Wonderland 6 is also its peak height, and it measures about 81 inches. And of course, I'm not very tall, so I can stand completely upright under the peak height. To reach the top of the tent, I have to not only stretch my arm upwards as much as I can, but I also have to stand on tiptoes at the same time. And here's something really cool that I noticed. As I moved around the tent and towards the left, the height at the extreme left side of this Wonderland 6 measures a whopping 77 inches. I also measured the height at the extreme right of the tent, and it was about the same at 76 inches. So basically, you might have guessed it, you get the peak height, give or take a few inches, across the entire length of this Wonderland tent, which is super cool and makes it feel so roomy inside. I feel like the very unique tent shape of the Wonderland 6 is what makes it feel so incredibly spacious. It's a bit like a cabin tent, but not exactly like a cabin tent. See, most cabin tents have two or three roof poles, and then four or six leg poles depending on the size of the tent. For example, my Eureka LX6 has two roof poles and four leg poles. This is the standard cabin tent setup. However, my Wonderland 6 comes with three of these U-shaped poles that span not just the side walls, but also the roof of this tent, and it also comes with one straight pole right at the top, running the entire length of this tent. This pole structure is what gives the Wonderland its peak height throughout the entire tent, which is super awesome. I think this Wonderland 6 actually has more vertical side walls than the regular cabin tents. See, for most cabin tents, the leg poles are actually set up a little bit angled, not completely vertical, so your side walls are also almost vertical but not completely vertical. On the other hand, with this Wonderland 6, these U-poles create extremely vertical side walls, especially the poles at the extreme right and left of this tent. Here's just a simple camera shot of the wall, and you can see how vertical it is. On top of that, I can even press my body against the side wall of the tent and stand completely upright against the wall, which basically shows you how vertical it is. I'll admit here that wind protection, well, it's not going to be the best for sure, especially because the profile is pretty big and the side walls are pretty vertical, especially on the extreme right and left widths of this tent. However, I think this tent could shed wind a little better than regular cabin tents because the walls on the two lengths of this tent are a little bit more angular, especially at the top, so it'll probably catch a little less wind. And also, this Wonderland 6 has a whopping 14 guy out points for 14 guy lines, which is much better than most six person tents that I have. This Wonderland 6 comes with two little awnings, one on each width of the tent, and here's me staking them out right now. When staked down, each awning extends out about 15 inches, and I really like that they provide not only some shading, but also a little bit of rain protection over each door, so that if it's raining, the rain from the roof doesn't drip right into your tent when you open the door. If you prefer to unstake the awnings, you can tie the fabric back with one toggle on each side, and the top will still provide some shade. Moving on to the doors, there are two of these, one on the left of this Wonderland 6 and the other on the right. The zippers on the door are YKK, and each door has two of these YKK zippers. I found the door zippers to be completely snag-free, and here are some real-time clips of me doing so. 
And also, here are some real-time close-up shots. If you're zipping or unzipping from the inside of the tent though, just take note that each of these doors has this rain or storm flap that you've got to kind of avoid. So for example, if you're zipping it up, you got to gently push the fabric out just a little bit so that it won't catch onto the zipper. I love how I could unzip the door almost completely, leaving just this little bit of fabric attached to the tent. And when the door is open, I could stuff the door fabric into one of the pockets next to the door, so very user-friendly. Each door measures about 66 inches in length by 64 inches in width, so I think they're very big. They're about four times my size, and honestly, I don't think REI could have made them much bigger even if they wanted to, because right now the door takes up almost the entire wall of the tent. This Wonderland 6 has a total of four windows inside the tent. Two of the windows are on the two doors, so one on each door. Each of these windows measures about 54 inches in length by 26 inches in width. The other two windows are more like triangle mesh panels rather than windows, one on each length at the bottom of the tent. The longest length measures 32 inches, and the longest width measures 28 inches. I found all the window zippers to be snag-free. Again, here are some real-time clips if you're interested. However, I noticed that the window zippers aren't branded. They don't have the same YKK stamps on these zippers like the doors, but the quality still felt okay. I also noticed that while the triangle windows at the bottom come with this black toggle to roll the fabric up, the door windows don't have this same toggle, so you gotta roll the fabric up neatly and stuff it into this pocket neatly. So kind of a minor con here. And yes, I know the windows aren't very big, but I think that hot day ventilation is still awesome in this Wonderland 6. Here's why. When I take the rain fly off and I recommend doing so for sunny days, check out how much mesh there is on this tent. That's an insane amount and I'll give you more details about this later. For storage, this Wonderland 6 has 8 pockets around the entire tent. Each of them measure about 9 by 12 inches, so not too big. And with 2 pockets taken up by the door fabric, you're left with only 6 pockets. And to hang stuff up, you can actually use the divider loops to do so, even with the divider in place. There's also one extra loop over each door if you want to hang a lantern up or something. I put this Wonderland 6 through about one hour of heavy rain, followed by a few hours of light rain after, and I found that the divider loops at the bottom of the tent have started leaking water into the tent. These seams have been taped, so why did they leak? I think there are two main reasons. First, these two loops are right at the bottom of the tent, and the rainfly doesn't cover this part of the Wonderland 6 at all. And second, here's a close-up shot from the outside of where the leaky divider loops are. So I think that the water dripped through this tiny little gap right here. And on the inside of the tent, notice how the loop attachment isn't taped or sealed. So the water seeped into this fabric here and eventually leaked into the tent as more and more rain fell at night. Thankfully, this was the only leak into the tent and the rest of the seams plus the rest of the fabric, like the flooring, walls and rain flag were holding up really well. As for window ventilation, in the heavy rain, I noticed that the awnings on the outside of the tent provided pretty decent rain protection over the doors. So this window mesh here was still completely dry even in relatively heavy rain. On the other hand, the other triangle windows at the bottom of the tent got completely soaked through. This is because the rainfly doesn't cover it at all, and yes, even though I guide out the rainfly slightly above this window, it didn't help at all. Speaking of the rainfly, I highly recommend guiding out the entire rainfly using all the guy out points. Because when you guy out the rainfly, there's a good amount of space between the rainfly and the tent body for air to flow in and out of the tent, which is especially important for rainy day ventilation when the rainfly is over the tent. 
On the other hand, if you don't guide the rain fly out, it'll sag a little bit like this and cut down on the ventilation. This Wonderland 6 comes with these two above door vents, and these are the tiniest vents I've ever seen in my life. Apparently, these are supposed to help with chimney venting, where the cool air could come into the tent through the windows and rain fly, and the hot air would rise to the top and escape through these tiny vents. But honestly, I felt that it didn't work, they're too tiny, and all the hot air rose to the top of the tent and couldn't get out. I could actually feel the heat difference when I raised my hand to the top of the tent, like this. And now onto the materials of this tent. The flooring of this REI Wonderland is made of 150 denier polyester, while the rest of the tent body plus the rainfly are made of 75 denier polyester, so half as thick. The door zippers are YKK, the window zippers are not branded, but all of them were pretty snag free. The mesh I think looks like Noceum mesh because the holes are really fine and looks like this. I was able to keep out every single bug while camping in this tent. One minor thing I didn't like here are these tiny mesh runs on one of my windows. The awning straps come with these reflective strips, as you can see here, and I expected the guidelines to also have the same reflective strips too, but they don't. And also, all five poles of this tent are made of aluminum. I think the pole quality of the Wonderland deserves its own section. And that's because the poles are just made of regular aluminum and not like high quality DAC. So unfortunately, after a few campouts with my Wonderland 6, two out of five of my poles bent quite a bit. One of the poles is this orange pole for the sides of the Wonderland, and as you can see here, it's bent quite a bit at one end. The other pole is my Y pole, which is basically this Y-shaped pole, and the end of it is bent quite a bit as well. And this is just from using it in my yard, and honestly, I don't camp a lot in strong winds or very crazy weather. I think the bent poles are because of the pole structure of this Wonderland. Unlike standard cabin tents, this Wonderland 6 features these three arched poles bent from one end to the other end of the tent. Can you imagine how much stress is being put on these poles just from holding the shape of this tent? I felt that the seams in this Wonderland 6 are pretty good quality, mostly double stitched, consistent, and the webbings from the outside were properly reinforced from the inside of the tent, like here. Also, I didn't find any loose threads in this tent at all. As for seam taping on the outside of the tent, I checked the rain fly and all the seams were taped like so. And for the inside of the tent, all the flooring seams have been nicely and thoroughly taped, and so were the corner seams. Also, here you can see the outline of the rain fly from the inside of the tent. And I found that the general rule is that all of the seams directly under the rain fly have not been taped, while the seams not covered by the rain fly have been taped. For portability, I measured the pack size of my REI Wonderland 6 to be about 30 by 15 by 10 inches. Here's what it looks like beside my Coleman two-person sunroom tent and also one of my 32-ounce Nalgene bottles. And it also comes with a shoulder strap which I could use for easy carry. And this Wonderland 6 weighs about 23.5 pounds for everything. For pros, I think the best thing about this Wonderland 6 is the incredible amount of livable space inside this tent. Not only can I walk the entire length of the tent with my arm stretched upwards, thanks to the humongous peak height which you get throughout the entire length of this tent, but I can even stretch my arm sideways completely horizontal and still walk the entire length of this tent. In fact, I could even walk around the entire tent quite a bit, not just the length. Also, the peak height that I got in my Wonderland 6 was about 3 inches taller than marketed, which is a huge thumbs up. I could jump around, walk around on my mattresses, and even stretch my arms out too. For more info on this tent's livable space, check out section 7 through 10 of this video. Another really awesome pro about this Wonderland tent is the amazing door design. On top of all the details that I gave you in section 14 of this video, here's even more of the best pros about this tent's doors. First, each of this Wonderland's doors measures about 72 and a half inches from the ground to the top of the door. And since I'm only 5'3", this is much taller than my height, so I didn't even have to duck when getting in and out of the tent. This is one of the rare few tents that I didn't have to duck at all. Second, it is amazingly easy to zip and unzip these doors. Let me show you some real-time clips right here, and you might notice that it takes only about 10 seconds tops to zip up the entire door. 
That's because there is an extra stake loop at the bottom of each door to make the zipping process easier, so I could do so completely one-handed with no fumbling at all. The design of these doors is mind-blowing and I really loved it very much. Yet another pro to this Wonderland 6 is the impressive amount of mesh all around the tent. For regular summer cabin tents, only the roof has ceiling mesh, plus a few large or maybe even not so large windows. However, for the Wonderland, the mesh doesn't just cover only the roof, it extends down the sides of the tent as well, and I think easily more than half this tent is covered in mesh. I also got to enjoy 360 views because of not just these two half door windows, but also the two bottom windows. I really loved that I was able to sit down or lie down and look out at the same time. On top of the amazing doors and 360 views, this Wonderland 6 also comes with a room divider, a decent number of pockets and loops, two awnings, plus 14 guy out points, 10 on the rainfly, and the remaining four on the tent body itself. So very feature rich. I also found the setup to be not too difficult. I loved that I could do it myself with no issues and the instructions were great. Before we move on to the cons, if you found this video helpful so far, it would mean so much if you could help me hit that like button. And also, if you happen to buy a tent because of one of my reviews, could I just request that you use my affiliate links in the description below? It would really help the channel out so that I can continue to produce these kinds of unbiased reviews for you. Thank you, and I really appreciate it. As for cons, I think the biggest one is easily the bending of the poles, which I went through in a lot more detail in section 22. Another con is that unlike the previous Kingdom 6, the rainfly of this Wonderland 6 doesn't extend all the way down to the ground, so this tent wouldn't cut it in too many hours of heavy rain. On top of that, rainy day ventilation is pretty limited to just the gap between the rainfly and the tent body, plus these ridiculously tiny door vents. Also, please keep this tent away from crazy winds as well. Light wind is fine though. A smaller con is this side loading carry bag. I would very much prefer a top loading carry bag instead, like my Eureka and even my Coleman tents, and I don't know why REI got rid of the Kingdom carry bag. Now that we're done with the pros and cons, here is my recommendation to you. If you've always loved cabin tents and livability, this Wonderland 6 is easily better than standard cabin tents and will be a great pick for you. Why, you may ask? Well, this Wonderland 6 actually has the most vertical sidewalls I've ever seen. The setup feels very intuitive. The amount of mesh on this tent is unbeatable. And adding the cross ventilation of the two doors, hot day ventilation in the summer is incredible. Plus, it has a longer rain fly than most cabin tents and is perfectly functional in light rain and about even an hour of heavy rain. In contrast, standard cabin tents have slightly less vertical sidewalls, there's definitely less mesh. For some cabin tents, I even had trouble setting it up on my own, and for most cabin tents, the rainfly is tiny, covering only the very top, and I had issues even in light rain. But unfortunately, while the Wonderland 6 is a good quality tent for sure, Sadly, I just can't say that it is the best tent that I have, simply because the amount of stress you put on these poles to get to this tent shape is a little bit too much for me, and I ended up with vent poles without even camping in wind. So I highly recommend that you watch these videos that I'll leave up on the screen here for a full recommendation that might be better suited for you. Thank you for watching this review video, and I'll see you in the next one.